So, you're a Sprint customer with an eye for HTC's design language, but you're not sure whether to choose Android or Windows Phone. We can help you with that. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is HTC 8 XT versus HTC One on Sprint. Third largest American carrier Sprint is one of several to carry the HTC One, the Android flagship we reviewed several months back. But it's the only U.S. carrier to feature the 8XT, a special variant of the HTC 8X and Sprint's first Windows Phone 8 device ever. We'll have a full review on the 8XT shortly, and to make sure you don't miss it, please follow us on social media and subscribe here on YouTube. And then join us as we put the 8XT against the HTC One in hardware, software, camera performance, and a few test notes. Let's get to it. These phones might both be branded HTC, but it's probably more proper to call them distant cousins than siblings. The One feels every inch the flagship device in the hand. Its aluminum and polycarbonate construction working together with the chamfered edges around the display and the machined speaker holes for a premium look and feel. Whether it's silver or black, the One's hardware screams stylish quality. While the 8 XT definitely makes a different statement, it would be a mistake to call it cheap feeling. As you might expect from the brand name, the 8 XT feels a lot like the older 8X in the hand, with a soft touch paint job wrapping all the way around the tapered sides and giving the phone a grippy texture that inspires confidence that you're not going to drop it. That same rubbery finish means the 8 XT takes a bit more work to get into and out of tight pockets, but it might hold up to scuffs better than the one's fancy metal. At 140 grams, the 8 XT is only 3 grams less massive than the HTC One, but thanks to the plastic construction, it feels even lighter. Surprisingly, it looks somehow thicker as well. At 9.9 millimeters, it's only half a millimeter thicker than the One, but the different shape, matched with that California blue paint job, your only choice on Sprint, does funny things to your eyes. Firing up the displays, though, eliminates any doubt about which of these is high-end and which is the mid-ranger. The 4.7-inch SLCD3 on the One cranks out 1080p resolution at 4.7 inches for a ridiculous 468 pixels per inch, while the 8 XT makes do with a 4.3-inch WVGA LCD at a pretty ho-hum 216 ppi. That's basically the definition of mid-range, and that continues beneath the screens at the processor level as well. While the One's software is pushed along by a quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 at 1.7 GHz, the 8 XT runs a dual-core Snapdragon 400 instead at 1.4 GHz. The spec gulf continues in terms of RAM, with the 8 XT carrying a single gig to the Android phone's 2 gigs, and the onboard storage is pitiful on the 8 XT, only 8 gigs to the One's 32, with only 5.5 of those available to the user. But that's somewhat made up for by the presence of microSD expansion on the 8 XT, which is absent on the One. Neither phone offers a removable battery, but the 2300 mAh battery on the One definitely outclasses the 1800 mAh pack on the 8 XT. And finally, the One sports some added trim in terms of its transceiver loadout, posting 802.11 AC support and an IR transmitter, both of which are absent on the 8 XT. The Android versus Windows Phone comparison is always a tricky one because the philosophies behind the platforms are so different. Microsoft's interface prioritizes glanceable information housed in tiles and a very minimalistic, very locked down interface. Whereas Android draws its utility from home screen widgets, easily accessible notifications, and a very customizable experience. Normally, the differences also include responsiveness, with Android usually lagging behind Windows Phone, but that's not the case here. The One is just as snappy and lag-free thanks to its optimized software working together with that powerful hardware we talked about before. The 8 XT, while often as buttery smooth as we've come to expect from Windows Phone, seems a little easier to trip up than some other devices running the platform. You'll want to wait for our full review here as we'll be checking another 8 XT demo unit to see if we can reproduce that performance. The bottom line is that you'll still want to choose your platform before choosing your device, as there's way too much to compare for an in-store, spur-of-the-moment decision. Definitely do your research first, starting with our full Windows Phone 8 review and our HTC One on Sprint full review at pocketnow.com. Of the software similarities that do exist, one of the most surprising is the camera viewfinder. 
HTC has ported much of the design language and functionality of the One's viewfinder to the 8XT, including the company's dual trigger approach to stills and video, and a few of its real-time filters. There's also an avalanche of options to choose from in both still and video modes on both of these units, so you should be able to tweak each camera's software to your particular shooting needs based on almost any environment. That said, these phones do pack significantly different camera hardware. The One earned a name for itself in low-light photography with its optically stabilized 4-megapixel camera and its oversized ultra-pixels, whereas the 8XT features a much more conventional 8-megapixel camera. The added resolution does it a favor. While it doesn't feature the standout low-light performance of the One, the 8XT does manage to deliver some pretty nice captures in proper lighting, especially outdoors, and especially if the HDR option is used appropriately. Side by side, in brightly lit conditions with a steady hand, the phones produce results that are pretty comparable despite their divergent hardware specs. Even indoors, assuming there's enough light, it's possible to get similar results. Each camera tends to wash out a bit in bright light, but in dimmer conditions, the One pulls ahead, rendering more detail and more authentic color than the 8XT. Also, because HTC's camera app on the 8XT is pretty heavy and runs a bit sluggishly on our review unit, there's more potential for motion blur when snapping off a shot. Finally, in the still category, the One's camera lenses, both front and back, are a little wider angle, capturing more at the same distance than the 8XT does. And the front-facing camera on the One is a 2-megapixel shooter, whereas the 8XT makes do with a 1.6-megapixel sensor that delivers less impressive, more ruddy results. The video performance between these two is close to par, with the 8XT impressing us more in this category than in stills. The Windows Phone's 1080p video is crisp, well-saturated, and delivers excellent audio, much like the HTC One. Plus, there are options galore in the HTC Camera app for slow-mo, saturation, contrast, and resolution adjustments, and more. If we had to call a winner in the camera overall, it'd be the One, due to its more responsive camera software and its excellent low-light performance combined with the optical image stabilization and its fun features like Zoe and the excellent gallery experience. But the 8XT is no slouch under more conventional conditions. We were surprised by how consistent the 8XT was with the One in side-by-side -side reception tests that took us beneath Boston on the city's subway system. From LTE to 3G to full service to no service to roaming coverage, the two Sprint devices stayed in virtual lockstep. Now, voice quality wasn't anywhere near as consistent. HTC established a reputation for an excellent calling experience on the One, and that holds true for the Android phone. But it's not matched by the 8XT. Callers could hear more background noise from our side with the XT, and said we sounded less clear overall on the Windows phone. The call was less enjoyable on our end, too, with callers sounding loud but muffled in our earpiece, compared to the crystal clear quality on the One. Fortunately, the 8XT does live up to its boom sound branding. The forward firing speakers, though not uniform in size on top and bottom, do put out a powerful sound. If anything, sound was louder and bassier on the 8XT when playing Spotify or watching Netflix. You won't have any trouble hearing either of these phones. There's a lot to consider when choosing between these devices. The $100 price difference on contract doesn't quite go far enough to cover the large gulf in specs and performance. Whether the 8XT is a good or a bad device overall will be answered in our forthcoming review, but compared to the One, it's not really even in the same league. Yes, both devices are very pretty in their own ways, and yes, each brings some unique touches to its particular platform, but the One is a flagship device, and despite its name, the 8XT is not. About the only reason to favor the 8XT, besides its microSD expansion, is if you're desperate for a Windows phone on Sprint. It's your only option, after all. But if you're open to Android as a platform, and you've got the extra 100 bucks, it's the HTC One that has the walk and the talk that's more likely to keep you happiest over the course of a two-year contract. 
Kind of an unusual comparison, we know, folks, but thank you for sticking with us to the end. If you did enjoy it, please toss us a like. Also, leave a comment below if you have some feedback or a question for our full review on the HTC 8XT going up very soon at pocketnow.com and the video review going up here on our channel page. So please, subscribe to us here on YouTube, follow us on social media once again, and as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.